Hey everyone, this is Salamander Anagram with MachineSkills.com and I'm doing a tutorial series on the integration of reactor and machine. And typically that's going to mean using the reactor inside the machine environment. But today I wanted to do a simple tutorial about using reactor to control your machine hardware, specifically the uh, RGB LEDs. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of machine and reactor tutorials as well as a bunch of other stuff. All right, so let's get started. The first thing to do is to make sure that you have all of your native instrument software up to date, specifically the controller editor and machine, because I was first trying to do this about a week ago and I couldn't figure out, it wasn't working, I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong, and I didn't update and all of a sudden everything started working. So I think there was some bugs in the, the earlier versions. So I have my machine plugged in and I've opened the controller editor and the first thing we want to do is to create a new template which you can do in the templates tab here and just use the edit drop down menu choose new and I'm gonna double click on it to rename this template to be reactor so the next thing we want to do is set up our 4x4 grid here to respond to incoming MIDI data you can call up all of the relevant parameters for a pad by double clicking on it in the interface and you'll see the assign tab loads in the right hand column here. So here we can choose what type of MIDI data this pad sends and at the bottom we can also choose how the LED is going to be controlled. So by default the LED is uh, controlled by the MIDI out option which means that whenever it's sending MIDI data the pad will light up. So since we want to be able to control the LEDs from reactor we're gonna set it to get data from the MIDI in. And when we do, we'll see that we have three different options for MIDI in color mode. So the first option is just single color mode, and that just means that you can either turn this color on or you can have the LED be off altogether. And the second mode we have is dual, which allows you to switch between two different color types. And the last one is one we're going to be using, and it's called HSB, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. And um, rather than ch change these all at once, we can um, select the remaining 15 pads at once and change them all to be HSB. All right, so we're pretty much done in the controller editor for now. So we can close it. And if your machine is not in MIDI mode, um, switch it to MIDI mode by pressing Shift F1 on your hardware. All right, so let's fire up Reactor. And I'm just going to start out by adding a macro that's going to control a single LED. So we can rename that to be LED control. And I'll change the name of the first input to H. And inside, we'll just duplicate that to get our S and B outputs. So we're just going to have an input for the hue, the saturation, and the brightness. And we want a fourth input, actually. And this is going to control the number, um, the MIDI control number to control that pad. And that number is just going to be equal to whatever the note number or control change number uh, the pad that you want to control will send via MIDI. Alright, so we're going to add a MIDI out module called the channel message module. <clears throat> and we're going to need to send the hue, the saturation, and the brightness all on different MIDI channels but they will all have some values in common. Um, namely, they're all going to be control change values, and that's going to send a control change value using a channel message module. We need to send an event with a value of 3 to the ST input. We want to 
set the number to be equal to our number input and the channel on the first one is just going to be channel one all right so when we get a new hue value we are going to use an order module to set the value of the channel message module first and then trigger the message to be sent second so that'll be out the third output of the order module like so so this will change the hue of the chosen LED uh, which will actually do nothing because we haven't set any saturation or brightness and when the brightness set to zero the uh, color will be completely off LED will be completely off so I'm just going to duplicate this channel message module and this message is going to be sent on channel 2. So we're going to send the hue on channel 1, we're going to send the saturation on channel 2, and we'll send the brightness on channel 3. And I'm going to set it up such that whenever we get a new value at the hue input, we're just going to trigger all the other inputs at once. And you can change this pretty easily. I think it should be pretty straightforward. All right. And I'm just watching this video again, and I'm just noticing that I have the bottom two value modules here are connected to the three output of the order module. That might actually give you some errors. They're supposed to be connected to the two output, and I screwed up while I was filming myself building that, so I apologize for the error. Since we're just going to be using constants for the values of saturation and brightness for this example, it actually won't really affect anything, but if you want to have the saturation and brightness be dynamic, then you'll just need to make that quick change. All right, so I'm just going to test these on my machine. Fortunately, unfortunately, I don't have a uh, video camera to film that with, but I uh, just have to take my word for it when I say that the LEDs are indeed lighting up. So what we're going to do is create a control for the hue with a value from 0 to 1 and we can keep the saturation and brightness with uh, default values of 1. And I'm going to set the MIDI number to 12 which is by default going to be the lower left hand LED. And I'm just confirming now when I turn this knob the color is changing And if it doesn't change for you, uh, one possible problem might be that you don't have machines selected in your audio MIDI settings. So you can just find that in the file menu and uh, make sure that you're sending MIDI data out to the machine. So I'm just going to make a few more of these and check that they're all working on my machine. In the future, I'd like to make this project a little more complex. I think there's a lot of cool things that we could do with this. Uh, for example, uh, using a product like the Finger, where you can have each MIDI note triggering a different audio effect. You could have um, all audio effects of one type be red, all audio effects of a different type show up on your LEDs as being blue or whatever, which just give you an easier way to map what's going where. Um, and have those load up in real time. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we have a ton more stuff on our websites, machineskills.com and reactortutorials.com. Please check them out. All right, have a good week, you guys.